It was time for Chicago to start his sophomore season here at Memphis. His last offseason, he got the chance to battle for the QB1 position, where he outshined his competition winning two of the three battles he needed to win and secured himself the number one spot on the depth chart headed into a sophomore season, where he will be starting for the very first time in front of his home crowd against Texas. Before that game though, he needed some upgrades so he would equip Mobile Deadeye and then would upgrade his accuracy as well. After that, it was time to get into his very first game as a starter and it was not off to a great start as he would be intercepted and that is not at all how he wanted to start his career off as a starter. Things were going rough against the Texas defense so far today and his offensive line wasn't giving him much support throughout the first half. They were down 17 to 3 and Chicago just couldn't seem to connect with his receivers in the first half but with eight seconds left to go he would make this big play that would help get his team down in field goal range right before halftime to get some more points. Things started to seem to turn around for the sophomore quarterback here in the second half as he would finally help get his team down the field and into the end zone. They were still down by two possessions however though and Chicago would drop back to throw, saw the man to man on the left side and he would get his first ever touchdown pass of his career. And just like that the sophomore quarterback had helped get his team right back into this game as they'd get another touchdown and this two point conversion from the Tigers would tie the game up at 31. Bad news for them as Texas would go down and score a field goal so Chicago needed to get his team down the field as on first and 10 he would drop back to throw and he would find his man deep down the left side getting them just shy of the red zone as this pass would get them inside the 10 yard line of Texas but unfortunately this pass to win the game would be just off the mark so they would settle for a field goal and we would be going to overtime in Chicago's first ever game as a starter Texas scored first with a field goal so all they would need is a touchdown and they would get it here and Chicago Robinson would help his team complete the comeback in his first first ever game as a starter and you know he was hyped to get this win in front of the home crowd. Not only that but he would be named player of the game as well as he would go 18 for 30 with 351 yards and two touchdowns in this game. After that great performance Nate Parker his offensive coordinator gave him a big task of four touchdowns in the next game but hopefully that was a doable task as Chicago and his team were taking on Georgia State. Chicago would almost get his first passing touchdown early on the first drive but it would be knocked in complete in the end zone. But after after that, it had been a tough first quarter for the Memphis Tigers today, as they wouldn't be able to pick up a first down the entire first quarter of this game, and the offense just couldn't catch a break in the second either. Things weren't getting much better, as on first and 10, down by 11, Chicago Robinson would roll out here, and he would put the football on the ground, and Georgia State would recover it. But he would try to make up for it right before halftime, as on third and seven, he would get into the end zone for their first touchdown. But that didn't change the fact that Memphis was still playing horribly, and they were down by 14. It was the fourth quarter and they were still down by 14 and would finally get their second touchdown of the day. And after their defense got a stop, Chicago had a chance to take his team on a game tying drive. If he wanted to do that, he would have to convert this third and 11 as he dropped back to throw and would find his tight end for the first down. But that would set up an even tougher fourth and 11 as he'd stay cool and collect it in the pocket and deliver a strike for a touchdown, giving himself and his team a chance to get down the field and score to win this game. On second and inches with just under a minute and a half to go, he would scramble and set his team up in field goal range to win the game. But somehow, 19 seconds was too much time on the clock as Georgia State would go down the length of the field and score a touchdown to win the game. Don't ask me how they were able to drive the length of the field in only 19 seconds, but they would win this game despite a pretty solid effort from Chicago Robinson throwing for almost 250 yards but only one touchdown. All coach could say after that loss was tough loss. We had to get back to it though and practice the following week and get ready for our next game as we were on the road taking on Troy. We were off to a great start as we get into the end zone on the first drive of the game and things wouldn't pick back up again for Chicago in the offense until the second quarter as he was getting them down the field. On second and goal, Chicago Robinson would drop back, he would roll out to his right, pressure coming and he would find his receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. But despite the great start they were off to, the O-line still had some issues. Both Chicago and his offense 
offense were playing much better this game than they did the last one, but they weren't quite able to extend this to a 17 point lead before half. Even though they'd only get a field goal, they would have one more chance to put another field goal on the board before halftime here, as Chicago Robinson would get them down the field to do just that right before the end of the first half. After putting together a great first drive of the second half, they would find the end zone again, and Chicago Robinson would cap off this dominant performance with not only one, but he would make it two touchdown passes to end this game against Troy, as Memphis would bounce back with a blowout 43-6 win over Troy here on the road, and Chicago Robinson was named your player of the game. Despite how great he played on the field, Chicago was still a student and needed to study for a big etymology exam coming up this week, but this next game against SEC opponent Arkansas might be even bigger for him than his last exam. The game wasn't off to the greatest of starts, as Chicago and the offense would go 3 and out against Arkansas, but their next drive seemed to be going a little better as Chicago was helping his offense get down the field, as on first and goal from the 9, he would drop back, felt the pressure coming, would roll out to his right, and would take this into the end zone himself. After getting on the board first, Arkansas would tie it back up at 7 apiece, and Chicago was looking to take his offense down the field and get them into the end zone to take the lead back over Arkansas. On third and goal, he would have a chance to do just that, but this pass would come up just short of the end zone, as that would give Arkansas a chance to take the lead with a touchdown, which they would do with a 14-10 lead. Chicago and his team would get the lead back though on this touchdown run, and now had a chance to extend this lead before halftime as they had under two minutes to go here in the first half. On first and ten, the Tigers were right around midfield, and Chicago Robinson would roll out to his right, throwing on the run, and he would find his receiver inside the five, as that would set them up for a chance for a touchdown on third and goal, as he would find his receiver in the end zone. But their defense wasn't playing as well, as they would give up 14 unanswered to Arkansas to start the second half. Memphis needed some points this drive, but the offensive line wasn't given any help, but they would still be able to pick up a field goal, and it was only an eight-point game as Chicago had a chance to help his team tie this game on this drive. On a crucial fourth and inches, the Tigers would end up picking up the first down. Staying alive in this game is on second and three. It would be a play action, and Chicago would find his receiver across the field and into the end zone, but Arkansas would score another touchdown and would go up by nine as they could get a stop here on fourth and ten, but Chicago would pick it up as he was still keeping his team in this game on third and 17. He would pick up another first down with this pass completion and would come up clutch following it up with another touchdown pass to his tight end. Arkansas had a chance though to seal this game with a fourth down stop as their safety would knock this pass incomplete. And despite Chicago's best effort, this comeback attempt would fall just short for Memphis. But Chicago would get some good news at least after that game as he would get a B plus on his exam and was also named the American Offensive Player of the Week. Following that big time performance, Chicago was invited out to a party, but he obviously would decline, and hopefully that extra time he spent not partying could help his team pick up a win against UTSA here at home. It was wet and rainy conditions in this game, so we'd see how the offenses would fare, but Chicago and Memphis seemed to be off to a good start so far today. After that though, they just couldn't seem to move the ball at all against UTSA, and after a good start, it was turning into a tough day for them. The Roadrunners had tied this game up at 7, and Memphis's offense could do nothing about it, but after going down 13 to 7 right before halftime, something would finally happen here for Chicago in the Memphis offense as he would find his tight end who would bring this all the way down inside the five. As on third and goal, Robinson would look to the end zone but could not connect as they would have to settle for a field goal right before halftime and to start the second half. Down by six now at the start of the fourth quarter, pressure would come and Robinson would launch this one up deep to his receiver who would have his man beat and would take this all the way to the house for a touchdown. And following that up with another touchdown to go up by eight, you'd think they had this in the bag. But somehow UTSA would complete the comeback, tying it up at 27 apiece, and we'd be going to OT. After both teams traded field goals, Chicago and the offense needed this touchdown on the board, as they had to go for the two-point conversion now, and they would not be able to pick it up against the defense. But thankfully, their defense would hold strong against the Roadrunners, and Chicago Robinson would help his team get the win, as he would be named player of the game once again. Chicago and his team now had one of the toughest matchups of their season coming up, as they were taking on the Charlotte 49ers, who were sitting in first place of the American Conference. This game was not getting off to a great start for them, as they hadn't been able to score the entire first quarter, but it finally looked like they were going to get some momentum going here, as Chicago was looking to lead them down the field before halftime. Robinson had got his team inside the 10-yard line, and on first and goal, he would go to the end zone, but that would be an interception for the Charlotte defense, and their only opportunity to score so far 
far this game was taken away from them. Thankfully, things would change here though. Right before the end of the third quarter, Chicago would find the end zone, but the 49ers had taken a two-point lead over them here in the fourth quarter. The sophomore quarterback was looking to change that though, as on first and 10 from the 19, he would take a shot deep to the end zone, but his team was back down by one, and he had to try to help lead them down the field to get into field goal range. They had no timeouts left and 30 seconds to go as he would connect with his receiver for a first down, but then coach would end up taking him out of the game, and with no timeouts, they would just let the clock run out before they can kick a field goal. Respectfully, what the hell was this decision on the coaching staff, as they didn't even get a field goal attempt off and would lose the game by one point. There is nothing that Chicago and his team could do except try to bounce back against the USF Bulls. And in the very next game, Chicago and his team were off to a great start against them. They were moving the ball no problem, and Chicago was finding his receivers in the end zone with ease. And to close out the day, Chicago would post a stat line of four touchdowns in route to this win over USF, as it definitely felt like they bounced back from last week's loss in this game. Halfway through his sophomore season, Chicago's team was sitting at 4-3 and three with a 2-1 and one conference record, and he had thrown for almost 2,000 yards and 17 touchdowns with only three interceptions in seven games so far.